Greetings everyone and welcome back to another in-depth phone review. Today's video is featuring a brand that I have looked at on this channel before and that is Unihertz. And Unihertz are known for their Titan series which are basically modern day Blackberry devices and their super tiny jelly series for people who want decent specs and a tiny little form factor as well as some other interesting devices that they've made like the TikTok which I was offered to have a look at, but I declined looking at it. In hindsight, it would have been a fun little review, but anyways. Well, Unihertz has been, let's just say, highly inspired to make a new phone called Project Luna. And you've all heard of the Nothing phone, right? Pretty sure you might have seen that come out last year, the whole Nothing phone? Well, the Unihertz Luna is a something phone. It's not nothing, it's something. Does that make sense? Probably not. But let's start investigating this device and see what this thing is all about. And before I do that, I have to give a massive thank you to Unihertz for sending me this phone to review on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I hope this is gonna be as in-depth as possible to showcase what this phone is all about. And all opinions in this video are my own and I'm not being paid by Unihertz or AliExpress to look at this phone. They have just sent it out to me for review. And that is exactly what I'm here to do, is review this thing. Now, if you are interested in this item, there is a link down in the description below. It is not an affiliate link, so I won't earn anything if you click that link or or purchase it or anything like that. It's just down there for your convenience. Uh, or feel free to Google it. That's completely up to you. I'll also chime in with the included timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to be if you would like to go straight to the camera test or the teardown. Those timestamps are there to help you along your journey. As of the 15th of April 2023, the Unihertz Luna is 299 US dollars on AliExpress with free shipping also. So that's fun. I'll display the usual currency conversion chart on screen to give you an idea of how much this foreign costs in some other countries. When I quickly looked it up, it was four. 469 Australian dollars, which I've just went, oof, okay. I'm fairly sure you can get a decent 5G phone for about 500 bucks here in Australia, but the price is what it is. We'll have to see if it ends up being worth it or not at the end of this review. I don't think this phone is going to be a winner in terms of what it offers for the price, that's for sure. It's the whole lighting thing that's the appealing thing to purchase with this phone. So let's go over the full specifications for the Unihost Luna, just so we learn what's in our something phone. So there's two colorways, white and black, very simplistic here. The front of the phone is glass and protected by Panda MN228 glass, which I've never heard of that before, but all right. The back is also glass and doesn't have any protection from any spec lists I've looked at. Construction wise, it does have a metal frame, which adds quite a bit of heft to this phone. This phone also does not have an IP rating. However, at this price, I guess it's to be expected. The dimensions of this phone are 168 by 76.8 by 10.4 millimeters. And the weight of this is 304 grams, almost hundred grams more than the OnePlus 11 I just looked at. The system on chip is the MediaTek Helio G99, which is the MT6789. And I like that, 6789. And it is based on a six nanometer manufacturing process and this is an octa-core processor with a turbo frequency of 2.2 gigahertz. The GPU in this is a Mali G57 MC2 GPU so we will see how this goes with gaming. RAM is 8 gig of LPDDR4X however in the listings it shows it to be 12 gig which isn't quite true. It's 8 gigabytes of onboard RAM but you can have up to 4 gig of additional virtual RAM for multitasking. I've personally used this on other devices and I see no difference but maybe that's just me. Storage wise we have 256 gig on board with no micro SD card slot. Realistically though, for a cheap iPhone, 256 gig is enough, but the option would have been nice. The display is a 6.81 inch, 2340 by 1080 IPS LCD display at only 60 Hertz. And hopefully this will look decent enough during testing. I don't know much else about the display, so I'll make sure to display any additional notes at this current point in time. In the camera department, we have a triple camera setup on the back, which consists of a 108 megapixel main camera with autofocus, a 20 megapixel night vision camera with autofocus, and a two megapixel macro camera which is just fixed. None of these cameras have any optical image stabilization, only electronic image stabilization. While that's not really a downside to these cameras, none of these cameras can actually record in 4K, only 2K resolution, which is very, very odd. For a 300 US dollar phone, you'd expect to have 4K recording. I mean, 4K recording's been on a lot of phones for the last, what, 10 years possibly? And this doesn't have it. And I will add that I've already done the camera test at this point in time, and I've tried open camera to force it to do 4K, and it does not do it. So keep that in mind. The front camera is a 32 megapixel fixed focus, one and it does 1080p video and has only EIS as well. The battery is 5,000 milliamp hours and is bundled with an 18 watt fast charger. We don't get any wireless charging capabilities on this phone, which is a bit of a shame considering the design. You would think that with 
all the spectacular lighting and stuff like that, you'd just put wireless charging on this, but unfortunately it's not here. However, we do get reverse charging support, so I guess it's all not too bad, but wireless charging would have really been helpful to have. The OS is Android 12 and Unihertz adds their own little touch to this for customization and all that. So we'll check to see how close to stock it is. We've got Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth, GPS, NFC, FM radio, Type-C port with on-the-go support. We've also got an infrared port at the top of the phone, which is handy to have so I can control several devices around the house. A side-mounted fingerprint sensor, a headphone jack, which is good to see. We've also got two customizable side keys, which is really handy to have actually. All the LEDs on the back will definitely have to play around with. And with sensors, we've got a fingerprint sensor, G sensor, gyroscope, proximity, ambient light sensor, compass, and a baroceptor, which sounds like a dinosaur, but all right. Single loudspeaker on this as well. It really would have been good to see stereo speakers in this, but we'll see how the single one does later in this video. Now we come down to the networks. This should support most major networks around the world. I've tested it with Optus, Telstra, and Vodafone, and can confirm it does work fine. But on screen is the band list. So 2G, 3G, and 4G support, which means no 5G with this. So stuck at 4G with dual SIM support. So if you're thinking about this phone, please make sure you check with your network providers to make sure your country supports the bands listed. As a Said, I've tested it on the three major telcos here. Yeah, just unfortunate, no 5G. And in the box, we get the phone, user guide, warranty guide, include a case, screen protector, Type-C cable, SIM eject pin, and the 18 watt fast charger. Now that is all the specifications of the Unihertz Luna. Now it's time to take a quick look over the advertising for this phone, which there's quite some interesting ones. So I'll show you these so we get a better idea of this phone. But if you want to see this part, feel free as this will go on for quite a bit. So we have the Unihertz Luna Artistic Technology Light Smartphone, which as you can see right there, it comes Kind of looks like an iPhone 12, 13, 14 Pro Max got fused with a nothing phone and then we have this. But yep, it just confirms the specifications which we've already been over. But once again for the RAM, it's showing 12 gig prominently, but it is the 8 gig plus 4 gig of extended RAM. So just say it's 8 gigabytes. Another quick spec list, which has a Kibi nomming at something. I'm not too sure if he's taken the red pill or not. Android 12, the full HD display, ambient light, NFC, 18 watt fast charging, 20 megapixel night vision, the storage once again, prominently showing 12 gigabytes, a Samsung 32 megapixel selfie camera. But let's talk about the brilliant ambient light. Meet the Intellian interface. Intellian? Okay. A new way to communicate. Unique light patterns indicate who's calling. Signal apps notifications. The light change according to play music. Everyday interactions made joyful. When I first unboxed this phone and played around with it, the lighting was very, very limited. However, I got a system update that allowed me to play around with the lights a little bit more, but I'll make sure to demonstrate that all later in the video. Once again, with this Intellian light, foreseen experience, calling notifications, play music, and watch the video. And I can confirm, it does light up when you do certain things. 12 gig dynamic RAM by adding the extended 4 gig on the base 8 gig large RAM to 12 gig you can always enjoy enjoy what you can always enjoy enjoy a smooth experience I swear when I reviewed the Unihertz Titan, the ads were a little bit better than this, but anyways. The Helio G99 Ultra Power Processor improved for a smoother experience. It's slightly better than a Qualcomm Snapdragon 680. I can also say at this point in time, this processor is a hot one. It heats up something shocking in this phone, and I'll further talk about this during the review. Max Imaging System, 108 megapixel flagship level AI imaging system. Capture every gorgeous moment than ever. And we've got the 108 megapixel main camera, Correct. 20 megapixel night vision camera. Correct. Infrared fill light. Correct. 32 megapixel selfie camera on the back. I have a feeling this is done on purpose just so they don't say, hey, we've put a two megapixel macro camera on the back. But anyways, moving on. 32 megapixel front camera reveals your radiance. Equipped with a 32 megapixel HD camera that comes with a variety of selfie features, Luna helps you take stunning selfies with every snap. I'll just say now, there is barely any settings in the camera for selfie features. I'll further demonstrate this later on as well. 20 megapixel night vision camera. One stories can also happen in dim or dark environments too. 20 megapixel night vision camera to ensure every moment is clear and bright. Two infrared lights are reliable configurations made just for these situations, rendering your moments clearly in dark scenes. That's a leopard? No. That's a cougar. Nope. That's a tiger. Nope. That's a cheetah. Nope. That's a something. I don't know. Glass combined with glass. Creative combination shape bring you difference feeling and visual experience. So is there glass on top of glass or is it glass that has glass with glass? Okay. That 
makes sense. Then we have the 5,000 milliamp hour effective battery, 5,000 milliamp hour high effective battery. Luna use high effective battery, bring to long time use, solve the battery use anxious with 700 hours standby, 100 hours music, 35 hours of talk and 10 hour video. I will say Unihertz has actual proper advertising for this phone, but I felt it's just a little more in tune with the channel to look at the really funny advertising instead. Reverse charging support, icebreaker to no electricity condition. If charging is not available when your electricity device is out of battery, reverse charging enables to transfer power from GoldenEye to any other chargeable device, which eliminate the need to carry an additional power bank. Reversing charging compatible devices, it's compatible with all of those. Android 12, more personal, safe and effortless. Luna runs Android 12 out of the box. Android 12 comes with the most up-to-date security patches and protects your data from prying eyes. Android 13's been out for six months now seven months probably a little bit longer doesn't matter customize shortcut button by programming the custom key you can easily access to seven different functions or other favorite apps quickly and finally within the advertising we have the useful toolkit which was on the titan um, this is basically just a whole bunch of little applications to use while you're out and about but it's kind of weird that these apps are included with this phone when it's not really a phone meant for rugged use like the titan was but we'll see how it goes once we test it out and just for the sake of it i'll start splicing in the actual real advertising for the Unihertz. Luna, just so you can see how much more professional this looks compared to what they advertise prominently at the top of AliExpress. You have to scroll all the way down to actually see this, but this says 8 gig plus 256 gig and all the specs are listed. Everything's all correct and it says everything that you need to know about this device fairly quickly. I should have just showed that all in one go, but as I said, I figured it was just going to be a little bit more fun to show the broken advertising. And that's all the listing. I think we get an idea of this highly inspired device, so let's go ahead and unbox it and see if this phone shines up like an ice road tracker. I definitely don't feel like a villain out of those blockbusters. Not today anyways. Taking about a week from China to Australia, I have a box. The box is uh, quite hefty and the phone box is just sort of rattling around inside of it. Hopefully it survived. Let's crack it open and take a look. Okay. Inside we just have some plastic bags, some more plastic bags, and then we have the shiny shimmery Luna box. Here is the Unihertz Luna box, and this is their design on the front, which is the layouts for the LED lights on the back, which are clearly not inspired by something else. It just looks like this says J-I-O smiley face. J-I wrinkle O smiley face. That'll do. Yeah, the box actually does have this holographic effect to it, which is actually quite nice. I do like that. With the plastic wrap taken off, you can see that a little better. Let's have a look at this. Alrighty. Designed by Unihertz. Yes, you are. Well, kind of. So inside of this, we have the SIM eject tool, the user guide, and that's it within there. Then we have the phone itself which as I said, it's, oh my God, it is a heavy one and it's thick. Remember, 100 grams more than the OnePlus 11. Then we get this little cardboard cutout and then we have a Type-C USB cable. They missed the mark to include one of those LED USB cables. That would have been quite appropriate. So we've got nothing in there. And then the charger is a European charger, which is a Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.01, but it's not Qualcomm and it wouldn't have any Qualcomm charging. So it says 12 volts at 1.5 amps, which means 18 watt fast charging. That's the box. Here is the chunk of a phone. I've just realized that the case is actually pre-applied to this, which gives it the extra heft to it. Even without the case, it's still a chunk of a phone. All right, here we go. All right, so there's the protective case. That's already on this when you get it out of the box, but we'll just put that to the side for a minute because let's take a look at the phone itself. This has a pre-applied screen protector uh, but it has a whole bunch of scratches on it already. We've got the front 32 megapixel camera just up there, the slit for the earpiece at the top there, and I can't see any little sensor areas or anything like that. I can see the chin on this as well. It's not too big, but you'll see when we power it on. Holy moly, can I say once again that this is a hefty phone at 304 grams. It's Thick. Now, once again, with this inspired design, borrowing elements from the iPhone Pro Max series, as well as the nothing phone itself, let me just grab my iPhone 12 mini and put that just next to it, just to give you an idea 
of the thickness comparison between the two. Obviously the Pro Max is going to be thicker, but this is just to give you a rough idea of how thick this phone is. Even though it's hefty, it feels extremely cheap. So we do have customizable side key, some antenna bands. At the top, we do have the headphone jack as well as the infrared port, a secondary microphone, another antenna band. Then going around to the other side with all the fingerprints that you can see, we have the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint sensor, the volume buttons. And then at the bottom, we've got a different colored SIM card reader, the USB type C port, speaker grill, more antenna bands, and a hole for a microphone. But on the back is where things get really, really interesting because we have Oh, look at it go. I can see the little LED bits and pieces there, but I'm pretty sure most of this is just decoration for the back cover. I do see some screws, and looking up close, here is the camera bump. So I've luckily got the 108 megapixel camera, the 20 megapixel night vision camera with the night vision stuff there, as well as the 2 megapixel macro camera, which for 300 US dollars, getting a macro camera included is just... A little bit tacky, but it is what it is. The night vision camera should make up for that. But otherwise, yeah, the glass back, unihertz, and all that sort of stuff. So I can't wait to see how this thing lights up. Taking out the SIM tray, we just have the options for two nano SIMs. There's no rubber ring around this to prevent any water from getting into this. There's no IP rating on this whatsoever, so it is what it is. I will load this up with the Telstra SIM. I'll chuck the case back on it, which makes it even more thicker. Time to power on the unihertz Luna, which I was going to press this button to power it on, but it's the fingerprint sensor which doubles as a power button to switch it on there we go oh thought that'd be a little boot up sound nope Ooh, all the little dots just wee and there we go we've got a setup screen we do have 4g with hd so volte screen quality so far looks fairly good with this 1080p display looks fairly good there is a bit of a shadow around the hole punch camera just there but nothing terrible at this stage so let's set this up i'll connect to wi-fi there's the standard g board there i thought it looked a little bit customized at first but no it's all standard at this point i'll put my gmail in so i can set things up later i'll set up face unlock which says no glasses or other decorations are allowed which i'm just wearing some blue light glasses so obviously that's not allowed okay how to set up face unlock look at your phone Perfect. All right. That was really quick. Okay, so this is using pixel imprint. Images are used to update your fingerprint model. Okay, let's see if it can just enroll with this small little area I have. Yep. Okay. That's all done. Just assistant settings there. Don't need to do much. And that's about it, I think. We are in. This is just a normal 60 hertz display on this phone. I'm pretty sure you can get some sort of Poco device for about 200 US dollars that has at least a 90 hertz display on it. So, bit unfortunate that this is just 60 hertz, but at least it's a big display, I guess, which, going for another further close up, it is quite a decent 1080p IPS LCD that they've put on here, but it's nothing too exciting. There's nothing too spectacular about this display. It's just fairly standard for what it is. Let me try the fingerprint sensor. So if I just... Okay, that was a little iffy. Give or take, I'm only using a small bit of real estate. I'm sure if you enrolled your whole finger, you wouldn't have an issue. Face unlock. That works too. Just do that again for good measure. Nice and fast. I'm wearing glasses, which said that's not allowed. By default, gestures are also set, so I'll have to change that back to buttons. Because that's what I'm used to. Hello. I'm not really used to gestures. The best gestures I used was on the OnePlus 11, but when I get to settings, I'll change the system navigation back to buttons. Uh, swiping down. Got some quick shortcuts there, but if I keep swapping down. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, torch. Let's try the torch. See, it says torch. Yeah, that's pretty bright for what it is. If I put it right down, you can see that it's quite a bright LED that they've put in there and it sort of leaks out of the camera bump ever so slightly. But when I do the camera test, you'll see this a little bit better. A couple of other modes there, nothing too exciting. NFC, let's quickly check NFC. Where would that be located? Right here? I'm trying NFC at this point in time and nothing seems to be working. It's not at the bottom, not at the top, it's not in the middle. We'll come back to it. Battery saver, nightlight, hotspot, nearby share and lock screen, which locks the screen. 
that's helpful. So we can edit these to have a couple of other little functions here and there, which I don't really need to do. But I just want to quickly see the default apps on this real quickly. So most of these are fairly stock, but I will open a couple of them as per usual in this test, like Zaza R something. Okay, but what I'm interested in seeing is the lights. Let me grab my charger real quick and plug this in. There's no lights happening. <laughs> There's no LEDs kicking in. We're gonna have to go through settings, I think. That Zaza thing is a application for using this as a remote because we have the infrared port at the top. Let's go into settings. Start off with network and internet. So we've got 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is all good there. Within SIM cards, you've just got the option to change both SIM cards, but both will run at 4G, no problems. Mobile plan. Can you actually add an eSIM? I don't think you can. Usually when you see mobile plan, you see eSIM. Connected devices, NFC is on. Well, let me try that again. I cannot get NFC to work. Never mind, it does work. It's right there. In connections, we've got all the usual settings, link to a Chromebook, Android Auto, nearby share, all that sort of stuff that I don't really need to go through in this review. While I'm at network and internet, I'm gonna give this a call and we'll see how the call quality is like on this. What is the default ringtone of the Mini Hertz Luna? Oh, hello. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Not gonna lie, that was pretty cool. It's not as spectacular as the nothing phone, um, but hey, what are you going to do? Sounds pretty good from my test, so I'll splice in the core quality test for you all so you can hear how the Unihertz Luna sounds. Testing the earpiece quality of the Unihertz Luna. This is on Telstra with 4G and VOLTA according to what I can see at the top of the phone. Um, this is what it sounds like and during the quick test I did, it doesn't sound too bad. It's nice and loud, so I can't really complain here. Let's see what the microphone sounds like. And the microphone quality on the Unihertz Luna sounds a little something like this. You'll get to hear it a little bit better during the camera test, but for now during phone calls, this is what it sounds like and it doesn't sound too bad. Not too bad at all. I uh, can't really complain with something like this. It's all together, no complaints here, so let's move on. And you've just heard the core quality with the Unihertz Luna. Doesn't sound too bad at all. Fairly clear for what it is. And I've just also tested dual SIM with Telstra and Optus and both run at 4G. So you shouldn't have any issues with SIM cards here in Australia. I highly recommend to check over that ban list to make sure this phone will work in your country if you are interested in it. We have apps which I can quickly go through the app list. Now I don't really need to go through this, but I'm just gonna quickly scroll through this just in case I see anything that might be of concern. We have app blocker, that's something. Battery stats dumper, that's a very interesting name. Uh, if I see MediaTek somewhere along here, which, uh, oh, yep, MediaTek, definitely not Snapdragon. We know it's MediaTek. Double cutout, okay. Freezer, that's something. Now, I don't know if I should open up Quick Shortcut Maker, LED belt debug, LED provider. I don't know if I should open Quick Shortcut Maker and see if I can do anything with these. I may do it at the end because I see a lot of this stuff and I don't know what it is or what it could do. So we may have to jump into Quick Shortcut Maker and stuff around with the settings in there. Punch hole cutout, sensor calibration, yep. Okie dokie, speedometer, Ooh. navigation, tool cutout, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll definitely have to open up Quick Shortcut Maker and open a couple of those up. LED lights. So they're at the absolute brightest and you can adjust the notification tones. Music visualization, we're going to turn that on, of course. Always on, yes, yes please. I want the thing to be lit up like a Christmas tree the whole entire time through this review. Patterns, we can have pattern one. Ooh, let me turn this off just so you get a nice, oh, look at that. Hey, look, it's the red light district. Pattern two, which is just green. That's very bright. Uh, then we have blue, nice blue. Then we have yellow, looking yellow. <laughs> then we have ice blue. Ooh, then we have pink looks purple but it's pink I can guarantee it's pink and then random which is just gonna be cycling through the various color schemes I say that and it's now just stuck on green unless I've 
Is that it? Nope. Okay. I'm going to keep it as pattern one. Does that not look cool? While it's very difficult to see on camera, there are a whole bunch of little LEDs going around there. Not like the 900 and something LEDs that were in the Nothing phone, but there is definitely a bunch of LEDs that they've stuck in there. I'll get a better look when I tear this down. I want to leave the LEDs on just to see how it impacts the battery life. See now, if I turn that back on, you can tell they're lit up, but if I'm holding it like this, the sides of it glow red, which looks pretty cool. Ambient light, other LED features will be disabled. Oh, hello. Change from red to blue for some particular reason. There's not too much more customization you can do with this. And with the software update that I did receive, which was about 75 megabytes or so, they have added some features to the LED lights. So now you can have patterns and have custom patterns. So you can change that to any color you want, which is good to see, but you can't have it like strobing in every single color. But with switching on ambient light and turning that on, it will then start flashing up like this. Leaving these on will drain the battery life quite fast and makes the phone overheat right there. It's already starting to get quite hot right there. Yeah, it is nifty to have, but I'd probably just have them off and just have them come up with notifications and stuff like that. And especially when the case is on and you do that, the phone does light up. So that does make sense to keep it on with that. And with the software update that I did get, it has improved some minor things here and there, but there's nothing really major to note. From what I can tell, it was just a few little tiny things with the camera, the LEDs, probably some optimization with power management, but it's a very minor patch that really doesn't erase much of the bigger issues about this device anyways. Intelligent assistance, there's the app locker and freezer and stuff. Scan, oh, we have a barcode scanner. Yes, we do. Oh, the shortcut settings. Oh, wait a second. These are two customizable keys. This is the volume rocker. Oh, I made a mistake there. So you can have these two keys as whatever the hell you would like. You can have push to talk, then you can have them short pressed, open up whatever you'd like. You can have it to open up any application. So you press it once, it opens up an application. You can long press to open up whatever you want. Once again, you can choose the application. So you've got two keys to customize to whatever you would like them to be customized to. So ideally probably one for camera and one for maybe music or something, but you can assign three applications to one button. So let's do short press for screenshot, just for example. Long press will do open flashlight. Double press will do swipe status bar. There you go. Just as a bit of an example. So if I press it once, takes a screenshot. That's correct. Twice. Opens the shortcuts. And if I hold it, there's the torch. That will definitely come in handy because I know a lot of people like dedicated shortcut keys. And if you wanted to have push talk on one of those buttons, you'd have to choose the application for it. I don't remember the push talk application, but once you have the app, it will all work. And programmable key is media key. So if you have it as programmable key, sorry, I can't really say that. You can click to play pause, double click to go to the next song and all that sort of stuff. So if you had this as a music player in your pocket, you could just sort of reach in your pocket and press the buttons and there you go. You can skip to the next song or just use your wireless earphones or wired earphones if you want to. You've got a headphone jack, feel free. The freezer, enter a new password. One, two, three, four, five, six. What is this doing? The application will be removed from the home page when checked. Okay, so you can just basically remove applications, just hide them. That's what that would mean. So if I go hide all, oh yep, they're all gone. And if I go show all, there we go. It should all be completely Oh, there they go. It's just kind of stuffed up the home screen, which I completely forgot to hold on the home screen. So home settings, menu mode switch. So you can have it to have all your apps there, or if you go back to home settings, you can have it as swapping up to get to all your apps. What does background adjustment do? Oh, the background adjustment is making it transparent. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm kind of starting to get used to the gestures on this as well. Definitely not as smooth as the OnePlus 11. They will do if you want to use Android gestures. Widgets, you can add a whole bunch of widgets there if you wanted to. And wallpapers I'll come back to when I get to display settings. You have a call recorder as well, an app blocker, which you can customize to not boot up at all, not open when being prompted by another application. Interesting. And network manager, you can choose applications to use either mobile data or Wi-Fi only. Other settings, the status bar cannot be pulled down on lock screen. 
Ringtone volume increases gradually. Fingerprint vibrator, vibrate on failure, vibrate on success. We'll just leave them. That's all that's in intelligent assistance. Notifications, all looks like the standard Android stuff there. Nothing that's been customized by Unihertz. Battery, we have two hours and 38 minutes left on 43%. I'm not gonna put battery saver on during the standby test. I don't know if it's also the LEDs, but right around here, is getting quite warm. I have a feeling that's because this is MediaTek. That's why it's getting warm, but it is starting to heat up a little bit. But now I'll splice in the battery test for this phone to see how I go with standby and as well as charging. I left it for 114 hours and it dropped from 100% down to 58% with five days remaining. So battery life on this is gonna be pretty good. And it has held up quite well during testing with all the camera tests I had to do and everything like that. But I can say that using the LEDs on this, as well as the phone getting quite warm, does start to noticeably drain the battery a bit faster than usual. Also charging wise, with an 18 watt fast charger, this took two hours to get from 34% to 100%, which I honestly thought that was a little bit slow for 18 watts. Let me quickly try a reverse charging on the Unihertz Luna. So I've got this Samsung Note 10 5G. So we'll just plug it in. Let's see if it does anything. Yep, there we go. Works perfectly. Just to uh, demonstrate that the cable is all there. There you go. It's receiving charge. It didn't charge that quickly. Look, I am glad that it does have reverse charging at least. Wireless charging still just would have made sense. I mean, look at the design of it. Come on. Like, you can't tell me you couldn't have put a wireless charger right there. It would have been perfect, but they didn't. It says three hours and 46 minutes to full. So it's likely really, really, really slow reverse charging. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to use a reverse charging then if I'm going to have to leave my phone to the side for three hours and 46 minutes to charge. Yikes. In storage, we have 256 gigs total with no expandable storage. You have a storage manager if you want, and what's the storage manager? Your storage is now being managed by the storage manager. I'll have that off. Sounds, sound enhancement, best loudness. Cool, we'll put you on. Also do the speaker test without that on as well. Let me just open up a ringtone real quickly. There's only one speaker. Only one loudspeaker. The earpiece doesn't double as a secondary speaker, unfortunately. Display, dark theme, you can have that on if you want, but I'll just leave it as light theme. Night light, adaptive brightness, wallpapers. Let's check the wallpapers out. I'm never sure where these are from, but they look like they're borrowed from, I would say iPhone. I could be wrong there, but feel free to tell me in the comments below. You've got that one there, bubbles, some nice rock things. Okay, the display looks pretty cool there. The colors are quite vibrant, but I don't know any information about this display. There's literally nothing about this display online. It is just the resolution, how big it is, and it's an IPS LCD. That's all I know. Got some blue, spirally, swirly PlayStation 3 looking things there. Some more rocks and all that. A spiral holographic can't really describe it. That's a fiery fireball. I like that. Goes along with the whole red theme. Uh, then we have circle drop bubble thing town in some place and a watery water pool of water. I hope that was an accurate description of the wallpapers. I am going to choose the ball of fire. I might just choose it as the uh, home screen. Is the lock screen changed? Oh yeah, everything's changed now. It's just quite funny how it's called the lunar and I've now changed it to the sun. Hey, customization. I've got to tune this to my liking, okay? And then in advanced, that's it. It is just 60 hertz. You can change the font if you want. You can change the icon shapes if you want to. So yep, some customization is there. There's no always on display, probably because this is just an IPS LCD. That's probably why it's not included. Accessibility, you do have talkback, display options, interaction controls, everything there. So if you do need accessibility options with the Unihertz Luna, everything that you would need is here. Security, we've got the security update is 5th of December, 2022. We've already tried the face and fingerprint unlock. So I don't think we need to do much else within here. Privacy, location, safety and emergency, password passwords and accounts and digital wellbeing and parental controls. As well as Google, we don't really need to go into as that's all the usual basic Google stuff. I don't really need to ramble about that. System navigation, here we go. So gestures is what I've got, but I will change it to three button navigation. I'll change it to this because that's what I'm used to. There we go. System update. Do we have an update? We don't have an update. And in about phone, it shows IMEIs, serial number, the phone number for the SIM card, all that good stuff. I don't need to show you the Android 12 Easter egg because I'm pretty sure I've shown it before, but I did turn on developer options because I just want to put the window animation scales down to 
1.5, so it just feels ever so slightly faster. Also, I did not see anything for the whole RAM expansion. I think it just automatically does it. Oh, there's another system update. I'm up to date, never mind. Okay, well, that's all of settings done. And at this point in time, <laughs> It is really hot here. Even the camera bump is quite hot, especially up here. That's toasty. Okay, I'm gonna turn the LEDs off. Let's just see if that makes a difference. I'll put the case back on it. I didn't think the LEDs would literally make the thing cook. I have a feeling it's the MediaTek processor in this just being MediaTek. Also, if you have noticed, even having the LEDs on drains the battery really quickly. With the LEDs now off, the phone is now cooling down. So the LEDs make the thing overheat. Let's open camera. All right, I heard a click. Oh, did you see that? That was a bit of glitching there. Well, here's the 108 megapixel camera that cannot manual focus on my desk. And did you see that again? Oh, there we go. There we go. It does work now. Something is wrong with the camera. Could be just in this. Let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. In settings for the main camera, you can save the files in their raw format if you wanted to. The picture size, you can have 108 megapixels, 12 megapixels, all the way down to one megapixels if you want. So I will be doing some 108 megapixel shots. There's definitely no optical image stabilization in this. So hopefully we do have some sort of EIS. Going to the front camera, that's just fixed focus. And if we go to settings, we can change that to 32 megapixels. I'll be doing that no major settings here video for the front camera okay here we go we have eos for the front camera video quality you can do full hd with the front camera file format you can change it to 3gp if you wanted to we've seen 3gp on welcome devices we'll leave you as mp4 video format we'll just leave it as h264 now the main camera can i actually capture 4k i can capture 2k video not 4k Bit unfortunate there. I might try open camera to see if I can capture 4K with the main camera because it should be capable of capturing 4K. And can we change the frames or is it just locked? It seems to be just locked at 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS. If you notice, there is no HDR on this camera at all, which is really odd not to have HDR on a camera in 2023, unless it's automatically tuned to it, but there's no other settings you can do. As for the advertising about the selfie camera with the unlimited possibilities, you have normal video and time-lapse, that's it. Unless they're talking about the scene modes, which I've played around with, and honestly, I don't see much difference with this. There's no panorama modes, there's nothing. The only things that you do really have are time-lapse and pro mode, and then if you go to more, you've got QR code, which they've added in a system update. I did recently get a system update for this, which supposedly fixed a lot of things, but I'm still experiencing overheating and stuff like that with this device, but they've added a QR code, scanner within the camera app, and infrared. There's the two little infrareds there. We can do ghost hunting with this. Hey, look at that. I really wanna do ghost hunting. I should take this to some sort of location in the middle of the night somewhere and use this and see if I can capture any entities or anything like that with this infrared camera. Yeah, that works, dude. And it's got autofocus as well, so that's good. And I can take infrared video, which is good. What settings can I do with infrared video though? Only 1920 by 1080. That's okay. EIS still, and I can do macro video. So if I want to do a video of a little bug run around the ground, I can use the two megapixel macro camera. To... That's fun. At this point in time, I'll take a bunch of photos and videos with the Unihertz Luna, and then we'll come back and continue on with this review, I think. Just from this quick little demonstration, I can tell you the camera's definitely lacking, but we'll have to see how it goes after the camera test.
All right, testing video quality on the Unihertz Luna. This is 1080p at just 30 FPS, so not much I can do with that. And if I go up nice and close to the Frogger, I believe it did focus. It looks like it is. Can't quite tell. This is with EIS on as well. So it looks like it is working to some degree. There's Frogger 4. There's not a lot of video options for this. It's very, very basic, but that doesn't look too bad there. Just sucks that it's only at 30 FPS though. I'll try open camera and see if I get any better results. There's the three Muppets there. Why does he look like he's been slightly turned? He's okay. That's all right. That's them there. I mean, there is some stabilization that is definitely working, but it's no optical image stabilization, that's for sure. And going to the brick wall and the bolts. Oh, it got a little bit laggy there. And they're going to Stuart and Mick just chilling in the afternoon sun as they usually do. Maggie the magpie looking majestic. Cato the cat looking majestic, I guess. Ooh, new lemon. Just focused on it manually just to see if there was any difference. And yeah, it looks all right. Lemon there as well. Oh, bit of an issue with the autofocus, but ooh. There's that glitch again, that camera glitch. I don't know if you've seen that. That was happening when I done the initial opening of the camera. It just sort of glitches up a little bit. Strange. For the true test that we'll come back to, there's Zenny, the metal Xenomorph, just there. Looking nice and detailed as well. Let's see. Oh, oh it's getting a little laggy. There you go. <laughs> Maybe it can't handle the detail of him. Um, but... Yep, that's there. I'll come back to using the two megapixel macro camera to go close up on the details. And the faraway aircon looks a little something like this with a uh, 10 times digital zoom. Whoa, you can see breeze air. It's super shaky. I'm trying to hold it as steady as I can, but uh, that's 10 times digital zoom there. So usually we get four times, which is right there. And you can see breeze air on the aircon. So, hey, not too bad. But that's as far as video goes. I'll quickly do the 2K test just to see if there's any differences. But, yeah, look, this is fairly basic for what it is. I wish there was more options, but, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day, isn't it? Okay, 2K video test with the Unihertz Luna. Looks about the same, to be fairly honest. I'm not going to do a terribly long video test with 2K. It's just more of a curiosity to see if there's any camera glitches or anything like that that's popping up. I mean, it still looks pretty good. Yeah, see? Oh, there we go. I was going to say, see, it's just not auto-focusing. But yeah, it did work. All right. Zenny the Xenomorph, if you can see him. He blends in so well, doesn't he? That's the whole point of putting him right here is because the Xenomorph blends into stuff. So, like, you know, far away aircon with... 2K video recording and 10 times digital zoom. Does it look any better, different, anything? Oh, 
kind of looks a little clearer. Kind of. Okay. Well, there you go. That's the 2K video test. So I'll try open camera and see if I can record in 4K or 60 FPS. Okay, this is macro mode, which of course I need to go right up close to the Frogo for it to work. And yes, it does work, but it's a two megapixel macro camera that could have been replaced by, you know, an ultra wide camera or something like that. Why just a two megapixel macro camera on this is, I don't know. Just what manufacturers do, but if I go nice, close up to the ground, can we see any friends running around? Friends? No, no friends, no nothing, no. No, oh, the flower. There you go. There's the flowers. Yeah, it works. There we go, straight up to the pits and the lemon. Is that the right word? Probably not, but the true test. Now that's some detail there. Zenny. Just all the effort that was put into making this. It's crazy. There's some spark plugs there. Someone put in the wrench time for this baby. Okay, this is definite proof that two megapixel macro cameras shouldn't exist. And if I got close to it, with the main sensor, it starts to get a little blurry. So I try and autofocus, and that's as far as I get. But if I just do a little bit of a digital zoom, there it is there. That's basically the quality I got with the macro camera. So that's a three times digital zoom there and it captures all the details quite nice. So that's pretty much what I mean. You can use the main sensor to capture objects like so. You can see the little bugs that are on there. Yeah, granted it probably won't be as consistent as the macro camera, but you can still use the main sensor for that purpose. Plus, it looks nicer on the main camera anyways. Ripley's sun baking. It's just having a good time. A big loaf. And she's eating her grass too. She you like your grass? Or you can see just belly. <laughs> At least you can see the detail in her fur. Hi. You're sunbaking. Hmm. Don't attack me and eat me. Nom 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 nom. Oh, I get attacked. Thanks, Ripley. This is satisfying. No, that's it. She's happy. And this is with the LED flash on with the Unihertz Luna at nighttime, obviously. And it's not auto focusing. It's not manual focusing either. It should be. Oh, yep, more camera glitches there, which is happening on this phone. Look, the LED flash does brighten things up, but I think you'd be better off using the night vision camera for this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's just not auto-focusing now, so um, yeah, just stick with the night vision, I think. Macro video looks a little something like this. Granted, you've got to go up to an object, of course, for the whole macro effect. It works. The flash is pretty useful for this, so if you wanted to just go nice and close to the ground and try to find any creatures, you absolutely can. But I think night vision would work a lot better for that. Also, Zenny up close at night time with the macro camera. As I said, so much work went into this. And it just got sold. I 
flea market. But there you go, there's the detail there with our two megapixel macro camera. Can you hear these crickets? This is what I have to put up with when I film at night time. There you go, that shut them up. So testing video quality on the Unihertz Luna with the night vision camera. I've already done the photo test with it and it doesn't look too bad. I do like the night vision stuff, that's pretty cool. We do have autofocus going on. I do have manual focus as well, which does work. And this is a 1080p. Uh, 30 fps once again open camera can't really help me out with boosting the quality but i tried with eis on i don't know it just seems to be a lot more stabilized maybe because it's not doing so much work with brightness and colors and stuff like with the normal sensor mm. so it's just quick to adjust and there you go lemon tree all limits. Glory with the lonely lemon. Just chilling. Oh, I can't even see Zenny. Where is he? There he is. There's Zenny. Looking marvelous. Such a cool addition, I have to admit. I, I love coming out here and seeing this thing. And the night sky. It's a little something like this. The phone is also getting extremely hot while doing this. And that was with a four times digital zoom as well. Yeah, right around the camera bump. And around the sides of the phone are just getting really hot. That MediaTek processor is uh, not too good in this. But yeah, look, overall camera performance is a bit hit and miss with this. I've got the lights in my face. Like, oh, can you see this? That's that's what it's looking like while I'm recording with the lights on. Oh, oh, the battery's almost dead. Okay, that's because I haven't charged it. Um, extremely hot though around that camera area and at the top where the motherboard is. It's getting pretty hot. That's okay. Also, this is nighttime with the LED lights on, so the whole back of the phone is just red now. That is a bit spooky. The LEDs also cause the phone to really, really heat up. It's bad, but um, hey, there you go. If you didn't want to have to put in a filter uh, during editing, you can just use this and off you go, although it's not that perfect. You're better off using night vision. But hey, you could film with blue and pink and all sorts of different colors. And watch the camera glitch too. I have a feeling that's due to overheating. Frogo group rave party. Whoa. -hoo. At least this is something. Not that it really helps, but you know. It's like Christmas in the middle of April. We hey, at least the LEDs work. It's a cheap version of the nothing phones gimmick, so I'll give it that. Great buddy Xenomorph. Woohoo. Look at him go. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Testing the front camera of the Unihertz Luna. This is 1080p with EIS on. So if I hold it perfectly fine and turn, yeah, that definitely does work. With it being so heavy, it's kind of easy to hold with both hands and hold it pretty steady. So it's all good. But if I just sort of turn and go for a bit of a walk, it does stabilize it. And it does look pretty good if I go into the sun and burn my retinas out. Yeah, it's good. It's good. No autofocus, no manual focus, just fixed, but it is what it is with a camera like this. And I can also zoom in too. And you can see flowers. Flowers. There we go. Okay everybody, you've just seen the photos and videos that I've taken with the Unihertz Luna. We've got quite a lot to talk about, but I'll try not to go on for too long about this. Let me start off with the 108 megapixel main sensor. Here is a shot of the Froggos at 108 megapixels. Ouch. It's just so blurry and overexposed and everything like that. If we go back to this exact same shot that I did with 12 megapixels, which is right here, and zoom in, 
it's basically exactly the same. It does focus quite well, but as I did show beforehand, there are glitches with the camera. During videos and sometimes during the shots I took, there would be pink lines across the screen. That's obviously due to overheating because during the camera test, this thing got extremely hot while taking all of these photos. The 20 megapixel night vision camera, it's a little lacking again, but it does work. You can take photos in the dark and, you know, you can see what's going on and stuff, but it's not quite crystal clear, that's for sure. I mean, the image they did show in the advertising was pretty blurry anyway, so I wasn't expecting too much, but oh, look, HDR just came up. Unlock this feature and more with a Google One membership. You have to go into Google Photos to add HDR. You have to pay to then get, okay, that doesn't make sense. I do like the whole concept of night vision and stuff. It is pretty cool. I'll honestly, give it a pass and then with the LED flash as well that did also brighten things up quite considerably so that's the frogo with the LED flash on but night vision does work a lot better but obviously if you want color use the LED flash now the 2 megapixel macro camera do I need to say much more about a 2 megapixel macro camera here's a shot of the lemon with the normal camera nice and up close you can see all the details and all that now let me do a macro shot yeah as I've said a million times over, with a two megapixel macro camera being slapped on here, it's more of a lazy shot for manufacturers to just go, hey, we've now got three cameras on the back of the phone. If there was an ultra wide added to this, that'd be awesome. But two megapixel macro, use the main sensor, go up close, zoom in, perfect, not a problem. Yeah, the two megapixel macro camera does help if you wanna go up close to an object and see what it is in some kind of decent detail, but it's fairly useless for the most part anyways. Video wise as well with 2K resolution with videos is the maximum you can go to. I pretty much just stuck with 1080p because that's the usual thing anyways. There was a little bit of iffiness with the microphones as well. And I have a feeling that was to do with me holding this because we've got one microphone at the bottom left of the phone. And then the other microphone is towards the center right at the top of the device. And because I'm holding it like this with the case on, I have a feeling I was probably blocking the microphones, but I can say the microphones do sound pretty good. But video quality wise, it's definitely not the best, that's for sure. You can see the EIS, you know, sort of jumping in and about. Yeah, look at that. Now, while it is playing the video, it all lights up there. It is what it is. It will do the job for just, you know, basic stuff. Night vision video does lack as well, but it's it's okay. Macro video, well, you know, that's how it is. And I've neglected to talk about the selfie camera because the selfie camera is as basic as basic can be. It works. That's all I can say. You can take photos with it and then you can use Google Photos to blur the background if you want to but very very basic selfie camera and even with 32 megapixel mode doesn't feel like it does anything it's 8 megapixels by default and it pretty much does look like an 8 megapixel image and then once again with videos as well same thing with the selfie camera 1080p video but nothing special going on there so altogether camera wise that I've just rambled on for quite a long time about they're not that impressive I reckon a cheap Poco device that's probably around the same price as this will do 4k probably could do 60 fps as well and would take a lot better shots than this they're just really lacking but that's just my personal opinion with me testing this it's just how i felt you don't have to agree with me but just going over the footage and looking back over them i just felt they were very very underwhelming for what they are let's move on because i've talked about them for so long it's now time to start testing applications on this i've installed some games i've put geekbench device info hardware all that sort of stuff so we'll just start at the top and make our way through obviously i'm not going to open everything up but i'll open the main stuff up. Assistant, calculator, calendar, camera, we don't need to go into again. Chrome, on the other hand, I did do a browser test earlier and it seems to be perfectly fine, but I'll just quickly demonstrate it anyways. Also, the user interface is changing to what colors I like, which was what was prominently featured on Android 12, the whole color changing thing. So now everything's red and stuff like that, which is quite cool. And yep, there it is, 300 US dollars in stock. It says pre-order, but it's available now if you want to purchase it, if you want to. Oh, see the notification? There you go. Yeah, if I just go through the... Oh, look, there it is dancing there. If I just go through the listing real quickly, there it shows the cameras and stuff, 8 gig. Yeah, look, browsing-wise, you should be fine. I don't think you'll have any issues with social media stuff, normal browsing, going onto random websites, whatever. You shouldn't have an issue. The only issue that I do see happening is it overheating just by the browser right here is just heating up. 
and I blame MediaTek for that. It would have been cool if Unihertz put a Snapdragon in this, but I think every single phone they've made has MediaTek in it. It's just unfortunate that they've used a G99. If they used a Dimensity, we probably wouldn't have as much heat issues as I've experienced so far with this unit. But anyways, moving on, browser-wise, not a problem. Should be fine. Clock contacts, device info hardware we'll come back to. Drive, files, FM radio, we can check, but we need to plug in headphones. Plug in some headphones, and I can use the buttons on my headphones as well, so that's cool. Yeah, that works. Said you couldn't use FM radio without the antenna, well, headphones, but at least it's got an FM radio and the speaker didn't sound too bad as well, but we'll come back to the speaker anyways. Geekbench, Genshin Impact, Gmail, Google, Google TV, Keep Notes, Maps, Meet, Messages, Mighty Doom. I went to the Play Store and this came up. So I have not played this. I don't know what it's like, but we're going to try Mighty Doom on this. This may be a new gaming test thing, but we'll see. Now I do have open camera here. I tried to set it to 1080p, 60 FPS. Nope just turned out to be 1080p 30fps. I tried to then go to video settings and then set the resolution and I can only go to 2560 by 1440. I can't do 4K. So this phone literally cannot do 4K recording, which is quite sad to be honest. Moving on, phone, photos, Play Store. I've already downloaded the stuff from the Play Store, so we don't need to check that. Quick shortcut maker, I've installed just in case. Settings we've been through, SIM toolkit, sound recorder. What does that look like? Ooh, wee, that's a little funky looking. Student mode, if you wanna put a restriction for a student, feel free. CPU system info as well. Toolbox, let's try Toolbox. Noise test. Ah, ah, ah. That's probably the best way to uh, check the noise test is by screaming into the phone. It works. Unhealthy noise, better leave now. Trust me, if I was in a pretty noisy environment that was about to blow my eardrums out, I'd be leaving as well. Compass, uh, sure thing. Please calibrate the compass as shown in the uh, animation. This is fun. Oh, it's calibrated, okay. Yep, north that way. Uh, yeah, they did work. Flashlight, which is just flashlight. Bubble level, which would be good for a rugged device, but since this isn't a rugged device, it's kind of weird that these are put on here, but sure thing. Picture hanging as well. Heart rate. Hey, okay. Let's try this then. Place your fingertip on the rear camera to start testing. All right. Cover your camera with your fingers. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so the flash is on for some reason. All right, let's see if this works. No heart rate. Apparently I'm dead. I'm covering the camera. Off we go. Oh, there we go. 42 beats per minute. I don't think so. That's a little better. I don't quite know if that's accurate or not. There is probably an explanation as to how that works, but I'm trying to think how that would work because I've never had to hold my finger up to a camera to get my heart rate working. And the flash was on as well. Very strange, but okay, sure. We have measure height as well. Start. Uh, 180 something or other. Stand straight and make sure the eyes of the phone and the bottom of the object are making a straight line, then click anywhere on the screen. Done. Done. Yep, that'll do. It works. I don't know how that works, so I just agree with it. Magnifier obviously uses the macro. Nope. Magnifier does not use the macro sensor. It just uses the normal sensor and there you go. Let's just use this tiny little gift card that I have. That's with the main sensor and I can go right in right out and you can see everything that's on there. There is another reason as to why the macro camera is useless on this phone. They've just put it on here to say there's now three cameras on the back when you can use the main sensor and it does exactly that. And you can put the flash on as well to help. Yes, it does get blurry when you get right in and you can magnify with the front camera too. Look, this is the front camera and that looks way better than the macro sensor anyways. I'm scared to press this one, alarm. Screen flash. Oh, oh, okay. Flashlight. Oh, yep, yep. Rave party. Oh, yeah. Did you like the rave party videos that i done in the uh, camera test? I thought that was pretty funny. The whole backlighting up is cool for about five seconds, and then you realize that it just drains the battery and stuff like that. It's kind of like, what's the point? Pedometer? Usually you can trick a phone into... Oh, yep. There you go. Clearly doing a workout. Clearly. Plum bob is something to do with... I can't remember what Plum Bob does. Protractor, haven't used one of them since uh, high school. Very useful. Speedometer, oh, this would have been cool. If I yeet the phone, I got to 1.6 kilometers an hour by just sort of going, that'd be kind of cool. It does use GPS, so this would be quite helpful. I must admit, I have not tried GPS in this test, but I assume that it should be fine. It got my location data pretty quickly, so I assume that it's gonna be all good and it seems to be doing the whole GPS thing there, so that's all good, but that's Toolbox. 
which has some handy little features if you need to use them. Anyways, moving on, we've got the YouTube test. And of course, we're gonna try the Costa Rica video at 4K. Hopefully we can do 4K. No, 1440p, 60 FPS. But we'll see how this goes. It should be fine. I don't think there'll be any issues with this. And the phone just lighting up as well. Yeah, that's fine. Just let it all light up. You know, the display is fairly good on this, I will admit. I don't mind the display. Would have been nice if it had 90 hertz refresh rate or something, but uh, just 60 hertz is what it's stuck at. YouTube's fine, looks nice. Can't do 4K though. I mean, you're not gonna be wanting to watch 4K on a display that doesn't support 4K, but it will be perfectly fine for just opening up YouTube and watching whatever you want onto it. Once again, the speaker didn't sound too bad. So let's go ahead and do the speaker test. Okay, that's uh, changing the playback speed. Let me just bump it all the way up to two. Sounds good. Well, YouTube Music wouldn't find BFG Division, so I've got BFG Division right here. Let's grab the sound meter. Once again, with the LEDs flashing for the music. Just wait for it to kick in, and it should light up. That was a bit underwhelming. It's pretty loud. Okay, that's with best loudness on. Let's turn best loudness off. That's a bit better. Speaker's not too bad at all. Would have been nice if they used the top speaker as well. That would have helped out. But the single speaker is not bad. It's not the best. Definitely at a loud volume with BFG Division, obviously, it's gonna sound a little bit messy, but altogether, I think you should be right for the most part. I mean, with the Costa Rica test, it sounded perfectly fine. It's just BFG Division is naturally a very noisy and heavy song, but it's also what I'm used to hearing on speakers, so I can immediately tell if a speaker is able to process all of that noise and heaviness. So that's why I keep using that track over and over again. But if you don't want to use the loudspeaker, you've got the headphone jack, plug some headphones in and off you go. It sounds pretty good through there as well, so no complaints. Now we have Zaza Remote, which is a application for the infrared port at the top of the device, right next to the headphone jack, just there. So I have filmed a little segment with this, so I'll splice that in for you all, just so you can see how this goes. Sorry for the really janky video and Ripley being silly. Let's try the infrared port on this and see how that goes. So I'll use the Zaza remote. Watch TV like a king. I certainly will. Go now. Okay, it's a TV. It's an LG. Now if I just do a little something like this, it should work. There we go. Yep, it worked. Sorry for all the dust. I, <laughs> I haven't cleaned up in here in quite a while. Try volume? Yeah. That works. You gotta go through each of these settings to say, yes, it does work. And there's a whole bunch of other things you can choose if you want to. What's a tickier switch? Ooh, these things. Okay, fair enough. I guess we'll just leave it as infrared. But there you go, it does work. And I say it starts working fine until this comes up. Watch a short video to download the remote code. So you have to pay to remove ads for this app. I'm pretty sure there should be a free one out there, but if I just watch a, an ad, so I can set up my TV. Uh, of course, it's for TikTok. You can also see the uh, LED gun off its head. Okay, it's done. So now I can just, that switch it off? Yeah, that switched it off. All right, cool. All right, so you have to watch an ad for that to work. As I said, I'm pretty sure there's a free alternative out there than using this. If you were to set something up, you have to watch an ad in order to download the information for your remote. I mean, I guess it's not a problem for some people, and it also just seems to be an app that they've just thrown on for it to work, but you can do a couple of things within this application, like use Echo or Zaza remote to control your infrared appliance through Zaza U, a Wi-Fi infrared device, and you can do a bunch of things 
with this, but I'm not too keen on how all of this works. I just basically wanted to see if I could switch on a TV with this and I can do that. I think that's all of the applications on this by default that I wanted to check through. So browser, YouTube, speaker test, toolbox, all that sort of stuff. Quickly look through. So let's open up Geekbench. Unihertz Luna, Android 12 with the Helio G99 Octa-Core. Let's run the CPU benchmark and see what score we get. I've just realized this is Geekbench 6 instead of Geekbench 5, which I've tested on all of the other previous devices that I have the scores for. So it's not going to be really a complete comparison because this is slightly different to Geekbench 5, but I'll just run it just to get an idea of the numbers, I guess. And then we can use this as a benchmark for phones down the line, I suppose. There we go. 723 for the single core score and 2005 for the multi-core score. So I'll display some other scores to the side. But as I said, because this is Geekbench 6 and not Geekbench 5, these aren't quite the same as previous ones. The OnePlus 9 Pro has a Snapdragon 888 in it and that got 1,078 for the single and 3,433 for the multi. The Realme GT also has a Snapdragon 888 in it and that got 1,141 and 3,471 for the multi-core score. The Realme GT 5G or a similar one is around the 550 Australian dollar mark. So if that gives you a bit of an idea, I guess. At the end of the day, they are just numbers, but these are slightly different numbers to what I'm used to seeing. I'm going to have to run Geekbench 6 from now on and use this as a starting point for all benchmarks, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. But anyways, numbers aren't everything. Let's try and push this phone to its limits and try gaming on this. I'm going to try Mighty Doom first because I've never tried Mighty Doom. This may be the first and only time I play Mighty Doom. So let me go ahead and open this up. It looks like a cutesy little Doom game. As far as I could tell, it's just a run and gun thing. You're on a um, an infinite loop and it just shooting thing. I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is probably not the best game to demonstrate the performance of this, but it will give me an idea. Okay. So drag to move. Okay. The mini slow will fire automatically. Okay. Okay, well, safe to say this isn't really Doom, is it? This takes every essence of Doom and ruins it. So that's not even worth it. Let's play Genshin Impact. Now I have tried Genshin Impact already and I've set it to the highest settings. It was all on the lowest settings when I first booted this up, but I'll show you what it looks like on the highest settings. That mighty Doom game was terrible. That's just not even Doom. I won't be playing that again. It automatically glory kills for me. That's not Doom. The whole point of Doom is to fire a weapon, not just run around in circles and let it do its thing for you. Alright, sorry, I'm rambling about Mighty Doom. Alright, this is all on the Ultra settings. I mean, it certainly looks nice. It's a bit laggy. Like, let's sort of go over to a more detailed environment. And you can see it's starting to sort of chug along. But this was all on the lower settings and 30 FPS max. So I set it up to the maximum I could just to give me an idea of how this is going. And my god, the top of the phone is getting warm. <laughs> it's it's really heating up. When I tear this down, I'll definitely see if there's any cooling that's been implemented into this. This isn't a powerhouse. It's more on the budget. It's hard to say it's a budget phone as well because of the price. And it's not mid-range either. I'll put the settings down ever so slightly. I'll put them down to default. So the default settings was actually lower. So I'll go ahead and restart Genshin Impact with the lower settings just to be nice to this. There's just so many things that you should like about this device, but it's just hard to really sort of go, yeah, that's a definite winner there. My conclusion's gonna go for a very long time, I can tell you that. And this is the lower settings and it's basically perfect. It still looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, it doesn't really look the best if you look up sort of close. It's a bit jagged and blurry and stuff, but at least it now runs at a much better frame rate. Phone's still warming up though, straight away. It just warms up and the lights aren't on either. I'm pretty sure I've had a device with similar specs run Genshin Impact slightly better than this, but look, it is what it is at the end of the day. Did that warthog just fart fire onto that tree? Okay, that's fair. I'll quickly just try Arc. Arc has not worked for the last four or five phones. So let's just see if this works. Might be fine. Yep, there we go. 
All right, I've put it all on the maximum setting, so let's just see how this rolls. Glad it actually works. So I'm not sure why it didn't work on the last few phones, but uh, there you go. Uh, that will do, that will do. The phone's lighting up. It's having a good time. Yeah, this runs pretty good, actually. All in the high settings as well. Ooh, dinosaur. Punch. Never get into a fist fight with a Triceratops. You'll lose. Yeet. Um, no, that works fine. That works perfectly fine. Gaming-wise, yes, you will be fine, but you probably will have to lower some things down if it's going to be something like Genshin Impact, for example. It's not going to run at a very high frame rate and look decent at the same time, so it's just a matter of fiddling around with the settings. But look, altogether, gaming-wise, not too bad. With the whole battery and the overheating thing, just because it was okay with a standby test, when it comes to actual usability, when the phone's overheating and running as hot as it is, it's reducing that battery life quite drastically. You will still be fine battery wise, but as I said, that MediaTek processor is just not a good fit for this. Let's check device info hardware. Quickly check through here to see all of the specs and just double check everything. Uh, so Unihertz Luna, MT6789, that's all correct. 8 gig, Helio G99, that's correct. System, Luna, all that good stuff there. The display, 60 hertz. Uh, what's the multi-touch actually? Probably 10? Yeah, 10 point multi-touch. Memory, 8 gig, 256 gig, and we've got a 108 megapixel rear camera, and it doesn't say the other two, it just shows only one. But it does say we've got four modules installed, which is correct. 32 megapixel front camera, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, sensors, we've got everything but a barometer. So that's all good. I'll open up the other one just quickly. All good, Android 12. System on chip is correct. Memory is all correct. Eight gigabytes there. Screen's never usually correct in CPU system info. This is just more of a curiosity thing. The capacity is 2,946,000 milliamp hours. This is always wrong in this as well. Thermal, 37 degrees and dropping for the CPU, which is about correct. It's starting to get cooler now because I'm not pushing this phone to its limits. Sensors, all of those there. Cameras, does it say? No, it just says two there. Finally, quick shortcut maker, just to see if there's anything that we might be able to open and stuff around with. I don't think there will be. Once again, this is more of a curiosity thing. Device properties, okay. Device property, oh, okay, there you go. Shows all the cameras, the LCD, everything like that. All the stuff there. Memory vention, close enough. Factory test, we know what that would be. Freezer, which was in the additional applications. LED belt debug. Ah, there we go. At least they have a debug for it, so that's good. Memory tester, mirror vision. If there is anything here that you do see during this video that may be of concern, feel free to let me know, but I'm pretty sure it's all good. It's just some little additional factory apps that they've put on here. So yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. We have looked at everything on the Unihertz Luna. I may as well do a quick conclusion now before I tear this apart. I frankly don't think this phone is worth it for the price. For almost $500, Australian, not having 5G, cameras being underwhelming, the processor just running as hot as it does. It is a hefty phone and it seems to be very, very rock solid, but I just think in terms of the price, you're just not getting a lot for this. They've simply just copied the nothing phone because of all the lights and stuff to just put a new product out and say, look, we have lights on our phone, just like the nothing phone. I've found the nothing phone for about $400 Australian on Facebook Marketplace, and that is a much better option instead of this. You folks watching should know the specs of the nothing phone compared to this. The nothing phone sort of takes the cake. Ultimately, what lets this down is that it's copying a design that was clearly meant to have wireless charging and it's just a fairly uninspired design at the end of the day that does miss the mark on quite a few things. The LEDs are cool, yes, but they're only just very limited in what they can do. There are some nifty features like the infrared port, the side buttons, headphone jack, but really I just don't see myself recommending this to someone who is after a new phone that's as heavy as this with lights. I'm just being fairly honest here. I just don't think it's worth it for the price. It's a very underwhelming device. The premise of it seems pretty cool. A cheap nothing phone. That sounds like a good premise on paper. But with testing it and making sure that I've tested all the features I have done, this is my honest conclusion. I just don't see it worth the price. If this was worth maybe 150 US, I could say, yeah, all right. It's a cool little budget phone to pick up. But at its current price point, nah, you can get a Xiaomi Poco for probably the same price. The Titan was good. The Titan Pocket looked good. But I think think you guys missed the mark on this one, unfortunately. The Unihertz Titan, 
is a good phone. And while that takes off the BlackBerry, that's kind of not bad since BlackBerry doesn't exist, but this is clearly taking the nothing phone and combining it with an iPhone 12, 13, 14 Pro Max camera bump and sort of look to it, it just doesn't quite feel right. If they had changed this back panel to not have this big circle for the wireless charging that's not here and instead had like several LED strips or something like that, that might have been a better inspired design, but they're clearly just going straight for the nothing phone look. And it is what it is at the end of the day. If you can find it cheaper and you're into this sort of thing, feel free to get this. But I highly recommend if you're wanting something like this, put your money towards an actual nothing phone. But anyways, I've rambled so long about the conclusion, but I hope that gives you a good conclusion. Unihertz done well with the Titan, and I hoped they would do well with this, but unfortunately it just misses the mark. That's my take on this. You may already have this phone and say it's really good, and for most people that don't really care too much, it will be perfectly fine. But people who know the nothing phone and no specifications of a device are immediately going to see this and go, what is really wanting me to purchase this phone? Just because it has a headphone jack and an infrared port and side keys that I can customize. Does it mean it's going to be better than my previous phone? It's likely not. Just the big bummer of not having wireless charging when there's clearly enough room in this thing to have it. Sad. Anyways, I'm going to quickly set up for the teardown and we'll be back in a moment. So there's not a lot of adhesive holding this down. There we go. Without any heat, I'm able to just slip a pick under there and there we go. Those screws are decorative. Surely they're not. I'm just also being really careful because I don't want to slice through any of the LEDs. Wow. All right. That's, that's it. Those screws are decorative. Wow. I was not expecting that actually. So I pop this little metal connector off and I can take out the LEDs at the back. It's a piece of plastic that has the LED controller on it. And look, there's the NFC right there. Unihertz, why? I just can't believe those screws are... F yeah, looking at those close up now, those screws are definitely fake. Yeah, they're definitely 100% fake. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, pretty much what they've done is just glued this plastic piece to the back glass, and that's it. I know the Nothing phone is really difficult to take apart. At least this is a lot easier than that, and it's just one flex room that connects everything, but still. All right, and taking off... The LEDs, I don't quite remember how many was in the Nothing phone. I think it was 900 and something. This has, if you would like to pause the video right now and count all LEDs, feel free and tell me how many there are. I would estimate maybe 233, maybe 233. I don't know, just a guess. Sure enough, that metal frame is quite beefy. There still feels like there's more heft to it somewhere. So let's keep investigating. I'm just going to quickly test them to see if they still work. Also, I guess we can try it from the uh, other side and see what it looks like. That looks cooler. Hang on. Look how cool that looks. If this was on the other side, I think that'd look way more better than just that. I mean, yeah, it still looks cool and everything, but I don't know. There's something cool about all that happening. You'll have to tell me down in the comments which you prefer. Unclip the battery and I guess we'll start at the bottom. Okay, and popping the bottom plastic off, we do have the loudspeaker, which does have some mesh over the loudspeaker. Doesn't look like anything too impressive, and it is what it is at the end of the day with how it sounded. Got one big flex ribbon, and we also have the bottom PCB. So the SIM tray and everything is all integrated onto one PCB. See ya. Okay, and the bottom PCB is just held in with some double-sided tape. Once that's out, you can see the SIM card tray, the dual SIM cards, and the Type-C port, which just has this piece of foam around it, no other protection, and any of the other connections are not covered with any bits of glue or anything to help if any water gets in the device, if any water does get in the device. See you later, phone. It was nice knowing you. All right, let's now focus at the top. Okay, and popping the top plastic off, we do have a flex ribbon just there for the flash as well as the infrared LEDs. So that's all integrated onto that little flex ribbon just there, and the camera bump appears to be metal. Now our battery can be removed. There are some little pull tabs, so we'll grab them off. Pull tabs didn't work, so I just manually do it. There you go. 4,920 milliamp hours. It's not quite 5,000. It's close enough though. It's also got these mysterious dots, like in um, Jerry Rig Everything's latest video with the whole MacBook uh, M2 having all the dots on there. It's kind of like a... Um... <laughs> a secret message from Unihertz there as well. Probably is. I just realized I didn't have to pull the battery off because there's this 
metal tray for the battery to sit on. This actually does weigh quite a bit. And to demonstrate how much it weighs, so out of the 303 grams, how much does this metal piece weigh? 16.2 grams that this weighs. Without this in there, that brings the weight down ever so slightly, but still. There's no lying, that metal frame is quite solid. It's super solid. Now with all the screws removed, I should be able to just pop the motherboard out. There we go. The buttons just fell out. There is some cooling going on. I'm gonna screw the battery tray in just because the side keys keep falling out. Also, I think there was a screw missing from the battery tray. Could be a manufacturing thing, I'm not too sure. But anyways, at the top, we do have a thermal pad and that's basically on the metal frame. There's no copper or anything like that. Straight on the motherboard side as well, the processor is making direct contact with that thermal pad. Yeah, there is some cooling going on with the metal frame being basically a big heat sink but it's just, yeah, thermal pads directly onto that metal frame. What takes up the weight of this phone is the metal frame. I mean, it's heavy, but it also doesn't feel premium heavy as well. It just feels heavy. Yeah, otherwise you can see how thick that frame is in between the gaps of the LCD. You see that there's quite a bit of a chunk right there. And each of those little pieces are marked there for the thermal paste to sit on. So at least some cooling's implemented, but I'll definitely blame MediaTek for being MediaTek, of course. The top loudspeaker is only a tiny little one as well. A couple of little flex ribbons for the side keys and stuff, but the motherboard itself, here it is. So nothing to really note. It's a single board. It's not stacked or anything. Graphite tape just over the shielding. The front camera, if you can see that code, I'll Google that and see if that comes up with anything. Um, I should have actually paid attention to the um, codes on the phone. So let's take a look at these cameras then, which they connect on the bottom of the motherboard. All right, so there's our two megapixel macro camera just there. And it does have a code on it to say two megapixels. That's all good. The 20 megapixel night vision camera, which actually, if we don't connect the night vision up, what happens with this camera? Curiosity. But yeah, no optical image stabilization. It's just fixed. And the main 108 megapixel sensor is just A052 right there. And that is a beefy sensor, but it is just fixed, unfortunately. Any movements due to focusing. Very interesting. But look, there's not too much to really look at on this, to be honest. I know what's going on with this thing now, so I'm going to put it back together and hope it still works. And for curiosity's sakes, I'll just see what the night vision camera does without the infrared LEDs activated. Without the top plastic on, I'll just go ahead and power this on and we'll just see what happens with the night vision camera if it does come up as anything. It's just interesting to see. It's just a black and white camera. That makes sense, that's all. And if I go down in the dark, yep. There you go. That focuses quite well. Oh, well, it's still alive. I'll just go ahead and put everything back together then. Okay. And that's it. It's back together with many fingerprints all over it. I'll just make sure the lights work. Certainly do. There you go. That is this very in-depth review of the Unihertz Luna done. And I hope I've delivered an honest and upfront review with this. It is hard trying to judge a device that you've been given for free, but I did my absolute best to just be as brutally honest as I could with this review. And I know it did sound very brutal delivering the conclusion that I might've been a bit harsh with this, but I just feel that in the market that's so oversaturated, having a phone that's copying a phone with a cool little gimmick sort of thing, but not putting in the effort for adding sort of those extra touches to make it something, just a bit of a downfall for me. I have to say a massive thank you to Unihertz for sending me this device for a review. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you can understand the feedback I've given with this review. Hopefully you can take this on board and improve, you know, if you do make a Luna 2, there's a lot of things that could be improved to make it much better. Even a smaller version of this would be cool, uh, you know, like the Titan and the Titan Pocket, the Luna and the Luna Pocket. The Luna Pocket would be really cool having a tiny phone with all LEDs and stuff like that on there. I think that would have been really cool, but we'll have to see what Unihertz does. Speaking of tiny phones as well, by the way, I have to give a massive thank you to Troy Van here once again for letting me take this phone off his hands. This is a tiny little LG compared to this big ginormous thing. It's such a small little phone and it has Wi-Fi too. So I want to review this one day. Just don't know when, but yeah, I was just sitting to the side and I'm just talking about how big things are and 
you know. And if you made it to the end of this video without using timestamps, thank you so much for sticking through this very long review and I hope you did enjoy looking at this phone with me. Any thoughts or feedback, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this phone, but I think I've already expressed what I needed to say within this review. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you also to Unihertz once again for allowing me the time to review this and stuff. I know it's taken quite a while, but I just wanted to make sure that I made everything quite clear about this device and I think I have. So let's see how we go. But thank you once again. I really do appreciate it. And as always, please take care, stay safe and be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which I will be looking at possibly a whole bunch of cheap phones from now on because I've got so many that I want to review. But I just want to get the Luna out of the way and Doogee's wanting to send me a phone and I'm not too sure if I still want to review it or not because it's got some cool specs. It's got 5G, it's got a really ridiculous battery in it and it's rugged. So I'd have to drop it and smash it and take it apart and kill it. So I don't really know what I want to do. I'll think about it. But anyways, I've been recording too long. Thanks again for sticking through this review i hope you did enjoy it and i'll see you all in the next one which will be some sort of a phone i promise if you like this content feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you did thanks for watching and i'll catch you all in the next video uh, uh, uh.